So what is the solution? Understand that the brain drain out of Africa started over 400 years ago with the children of Africa who were being taken out of Africa as slaves. Remember when they were choosing which Africans to take out as slaves, they chose the fittest, the smartest that who they felt would sustain and survive the rigorous journey across the Atlantic, followed by those who have left Africa in recent years in search of greener pastures, some running away from famine and wars. But the end result is Africans around the world are building other nations while we are allowing our beloved continent to languish or be exploited. The colonizers have been in Africa for centuries. All they have succeeded at doing is building infrastructure designed to do nothing but extract resources out of Africa. That's all they have done, and that's all they plan to continue to do. We're the only ones who can change that paradigm. And that means the African diaspora must wake up. That means the African diaspora must understand what is really going on and not understand Africa from the eyes of the colonizers, from the eyes of the media that have chosen to paint Africa as a diseased and dying continent in need of rescue. Let's understand our Africa as African diaspora. Let's understand our role. It's very difficult for African and um, African businessmen in Malawi, in Botswana, to think continental. They're struggling to make a living in that little bitty country with all the restrictions and the difficulties of reaching to the next to the country next door to then ask that same businessman to think continental. But the people who can help with that bridge, the pe people who are already integrated in a way, people who can come to Africa with an integrated mind are the children of Africa in the diaspora. Like I said before, a million diaspora with a thousand dollars, that's a billion dollars. A billion dollars is a lot of money. And then you take that one billion, let's do it a year, a year, up, year in and year out. Allow me to share with you briefly that in 1945, 13 Jewish men met in the library. They didn't even have a place to meet. This was soon after Holocaust. The ideas they came up with during that meeting were based on two facts two realizations that there was a need for them to unite, for them to speak with one voice when it comes to issues pertaining to them and their country. They also realized that their unity was useless if they did not back it up with financial resources. So that is all they did. They united. They said, we may not like each other as individuals, but when it comes to their Jewishness, when it comes to Israel, they stick together like super glue. They also pulled out their financial resources. If I may stand, stop for a second, use Israel as an example and the Jewish people. The Jewish people own this little bitty tiny little piece of land, which is a desert. There's only 15 million Jews around the world. Compared to Africa, we have the largest land mass on earth, richest continent on earth and over 400 million African diaspora. The Jews, their little bitty country that is a desert, financially they control the world whether you like it or not. When those Americans in Charlottesville were holding their tiki torches, talking about the Jews will not replace us, you never saw a single Jewish man on television complaining. They complain with their finances. Their dollars speak for them. Jews do not go and borrow money from anybody. They fund themselves. They're probably the most powerful people financially. Their money speaks for them. What do we do instead when George Floyd gets killed and many others, we're on the street, we make noise and that's it. If everybody that protested could put a dollar and say, yes, we want to protest, but we're also going to do something about it. Now we could get somewhere. We could get somewhere. Translate 
those voices into finances. Let's make that bridge. Let's create that bridge. Let's take a page from the Jews. Let's understand that as black people, we are the most endangered species on earth. Let's also make a commitment that how long are we going to allow this carnage to go on? How long are we going to continue to be stupid? It's about the finances, my brothers and sisters. If we do not bring our finances together, if we do not understand that my $85 a month for a year is an investment in not only myself, but my children, my grandchildren, and generations to come, then who are we? Are we really willing to look in the eyes of our grandchildren 20 years from now? When your granddaughter says, grandmother, grandfather, there were problems in our beloved Africa. There were problems with the black race. What did you do? Grandmother, what did you do? Good question, good question. Are you willing to tell your grandchildren that we did nothing? Mm, mm. Are you willing to tell your grandchildren that we did nothing? Because we're too goddamn selfish, pardon my language. ADDR is calling on all people of African descent to stand up. We're asking everybody, let's all commit to $85 a month or whatever you can. Let's raise that $1 billion. Let's let the world know that black people are not taking it anymore. We are not poor people. We don't need anybody. We can take care of ourselves. We have it within us to raise enough money to build the Africa that we want. But first, we must believe in ourselves and in each other. Mm -hmm. We must refuse to be treated as second-class citizens. We are not inferior to anybody, and nobody is superior to us. And we don't need to look to anybody outside us. Let's go back to the way things were, looking for African solutions to African problems. And let's stop looking to those who have oppressed us for help. We don't need help from anybody. I urge all of you to go to ouraddi.org and join the movement. We have a program now where we are looking to create a city of return in Cape Coast, Ghana. We are going to show the world that black people for a change, we are going to unite and we are going to speak with one voice that we are going to build the Africa that we want using our own natural resources our Africa by us for us. We must stop looking to the foreigners who have destroyed us for help. I don't know what it's going to take for us to understand that that help is never going to come. It's about us and the buck stops there. So ADDI, the city of return in Ghana, we're going to show the world how it's all going to be done. And we'll continue to blow the horn and wake as many people up as we can. We want every black man and woman to stand up and be proud to be who you are. And the only way to get our respect from this world is when we stand up and we are women and we are men and we are taking care of ourselves. Let's make a commitment to our children, grandchildren and generations to come. That while we may have suffered for centuries, we are the generation that's going to turn the corner. We are the generation that's going to put an end to this carnage. We are the generation that's going to say enough is enough. Moving forward, it's about us looking out for us and that the self-hate and mistrust of each other must come to an end. And that's why I must end with once again asking each and every one of us having a conversation with image in the mirror and asking yourself, why do I think the way I do? Why do I feel inferior? Answer that question. As a black man and as a black woman, you are the mother and father of humanity. Without you, there would not be humanity as we know it. Therefore, you belong on the tallest pedestal. You don't need anybody to put you on that pedestal because you belong there and the buck stops there. No one can replace us because we are indestructible. 
the proud, the beautiful, intelligent, sophisticated, highly adaptable, and totally indestructible Africans. Thank you.